Welcome to the BI Gorilla channel. My name is Rick, and today we're going to look at how you can replace multiple substrings in Power Query, but then in a way that makes it super easy to maintain. Let's find out. Now, if you move over to the screen, you can see that I have a country name, and in that country name is not just the name, but are, are also continents out there. The issue is the logic to remove those continent names is a little bit difficult here because some of them start with curly brackets. There are some without a space and a dash. Then there's Oceania, which has a forward slash here. So one method that people might use here is replace them all manually. So I've added five different steps here. I only left out Asia, but how you would remove this is right click, replace values, open your brackets, say Asia, and I need a space at the front and we're gonna replace this by nothing. Press okay. Now, as you can see, we have generated six different steps here and it's, it works, it works. But what I don't like about this is that it creates so many different steps and your query gets cluttered. Now you're going to have to replace all of these values in the future. If there's more replacements, it's not so easy to replace that right away because again, you need to make additional steps and perhaps your query already has, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 steps. So having an additional six is quite hard. Now, normally, if you replace values for the entire cell that match the entire cell, you can use a simple merge operation. But for substrings, that's not possible. Let's see an alternative way in how we can do this. So we're going to move to a separate query here. Now, it's important to know how we can replace values, first of all, uh, which I just showed you. But let's see if we can just steal the code for a bit. So the replace value operation uses this code here. Okay. If we want to do multiple replacements, do the replacements, grab the output of that replacement and do another one. A function that comes to mind quickly is list accumulate. So if we would make a new step, I'm going to showcase how we can leverage this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So let's say I use a list accumulate. The first argument of list accumulate always expects you to provide a list of items. And what we can provide is a list with all of the replacements. So let's, for example, say we're opening a curly bracket here. We want to replace the space North America. We want to replace that with an empty string, just like this. Now, the issue is we now have a list with two items and actually this should be a single replacement. So what we can do is add another curly bracket around this. So it's an outer list that contains our replacements within the inner list. So what that basically means is these are the replacements and they fall as a single item in the outer list. This indicates the outer list. Now, knowing this, I'm just going to copy paste this so we can see what table we have. So we're going to do this once more. So knowing this, we can now continue with list accumulate. So we have provided a list of replacements. The second argument uh, requires a seed. Now that seed is simply the starting value where list accumulate needs to operate on. So in this case, I'm going to refer to the source step because that table is where we want to perform the replacements. And then we need to define an accumulator. Now the accumulator is simply a function that it will iterate uh, that will iterate over the, the input list. So what we had seen was, uh, first of all, the accumulator needs two arguments. So we're going to have the current table and we're going to have a replacement. Then we have the goes by operator, which is the start of a function. And now what we actually want to do is for this, this simple example, we want to do the replacement. So if I go here, we can have our replace values. Here we go. Okay, so I only pasted the code as the UI generated it for us, but we need to make sure that this fits within list accumulate. So what, what, what do we do here? So table replace value needs a value to replace in. That will be our current table parameter. So in the first replacement that we do, that will be the source. Then the next step is to say, what are we going to replace? Well, we hard coded North America here, but actually we want to find the first list item. So that is this list here. And within that list item, 
we want to find the first value. So I'm going to refer to it as a replacement. So this replacement is both of these. And then I just want the first value from there with a zero base index. And we want to replace this value, which is North America. We want to replace that with an empty string. So we're going to replace it with this item here. No, and then what's only left is to provide the replacer function, which is here, and in which column we're going to replace it by. Now let's see what this does for us, because this setup is only going to perform a single replacement right now. And if we click OK, in the previous step, North America was here. And in this step, North America is gone. Now we haven't achieved anything substantial yet because we do a single replacement. But let's expand this now. So instead of a single list of replacements, we're going to have two replacements in here. And in this case, we're going to see a Europe, if we can replace that as well. So we can have Europe, close it. And as you can see, now both of these have been replaced. Because what list accumulate does is it performs the first replacements in the current table. So that is source first. And after it does that replacement, it goes to the next item it finds in the list and performs another replacement on the output of the previous step. This is the start of it. Well, setting that up is maybe a bit complex if this is the first time you look at list accumulate. The fun part, however, is once you have this, we can turn it into a function and that function will be super easy to work with. Okay, so how can we do such? I am going to copy this part and we're going to see if we can turn this into the desired function that we need. So I could say, I'm going to, let's go to the advanced editor, first of all. And the logic for this replacement for list accumulate, I want to add that as a separate function at the start. Zoom in. So we'll have an FX replace values equals. Then I'm just going to copy this step that we had here list accumulate together with all of these steps. I'm going to put this on the next line. And we're going to have the source here. And this will be part of this part here. Okay, now if we need to make a function out of this, there are certain elements that we want to provide to a function. So we're going to open parenthesis, it goes to operator, and we need to provide all of our parameters within the parentheses here. And as you create functions, it's always useful to stick to a pattern that most functions do. So we're going to start with a, we're going to call this my table as table. That's the first parameter. Now, if we want to apply our function to a certain table, then that could, for example, be source. I need to replace this step, which we call source with my table. Then we might be interested in a list of replacements. So list of replacements as list. And instead of hard coding this here, we can then have the list of replacements right there. And finally, we also need to provide in our code in which columns we want to replace values. And that might be in a single column, but that might also be in multiple columns. So we could have like a list of columns as list. Exactly. And the output of our, our function will be a table. So we can have the output as table here. Then we can basically close list accumulate. Mm, this maybe fits better over here. And knowing this, we can have a comma and go to the next step. So, so far, all we did was we copied the list accumulate logic and we created some parameters for how we can uh, build this into our function. Let's click OK and see what happens. So I have now defined my function here. I have a source and we had a step where we used list accumulate. But we can now make things so much easier. So instead of this very complex step, we can now say fx replace values, open our parentheses, then I'm going to leave this as is. And the first step for our replace values will be the source table. Then the second argument is the list of replacements. And as last argument, we need to provide the list of column names where to apply this to. 
And then we can basically remove the rest. So what this does is we have this here, we have a list of replacements, and we have a list with the columns to replace values in. And that does it. Now here's the thing. In the future, if we want to expand our code, we can expand this list. But maybe you want to store it elsewhere. So I have a replacement list here with all of the replacements that we do. And well, why hard code things here in the code? I could simply say, I want to have my replacements and apply everything. Now, here's the thing. I missed the minus Europe because it has a space, so I can fix that. And if I go back now, you can see that we had a single source step. And to replace multiple substrings, I now just call this function a single time. And if in the future I want to expand this, you simply extend this list of replacements. That's how you can do it. Now, if these concepts are complex, I understand. It's, it's not easy. But if you want to learn more about this, I recommend getting the definitive guide to Power Query M because you're going to learn step by step how these complex apply to real life scenarios. And I think you'll like it. Now, if these type of functions are helpful for you, let me know in the comments what other types of operations you would like automated. And we can see if we make a video out of that as well. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.